What's going on you guys? Welcome back to Vlogging with Gable. We are going to the cemetery to check out some cemeteries. Don't mind the audio. I'm using my phone. But yeah, let's go. Hey guys, so we are now at the motherfucking 7-Eleven because you already know it's not a cemetery date slash vibe if you don't got the snack. Hey guys, so we got this and my chips and the pizza is cooking you can never go wrong guys we made it we're low-key losing daylight but we're out here we're gonna go and show you guys the mason first because his gravestone actually look really interesting so here we go hey, you guys so i'm out here looking for the mason one and we just found this weird, bizarre cemetery. This one is actually in front of a tree. And the thing, is, the letters of it is facing that way. The video we just filmed before was also a mason. We just found the mason statue. So we're going to show you guys. His name is down here. And then look up here, you guys. This is the mason symbol. They all go like this in pictures or something like that. And look at right here, you guys. Look at like this detail. Like just think how much this would have to weigh. Like most definitely like two, three cars. So much stone. Very beautiful. Kind of scary technique. Looks like it's just been sitting here. But yeah, you guys, we're going to keep moving on. Um, guys, so we just heard gunshots and we heard like people talking in the motherfucking cemetery and this nigga said that he saw somebody ran and it disappeared and then the gunshots right now so we're gonna come back in the morning i'm paranoid as fuck what's going on you guys welcome back to vlogging with giggles today we are picking up where we left off yesterday so let's get right into it before i get into more of this video today we are going to go visit steven stainer's um where he is buried and we're gonna break down some history and yeah let's go this is where steven stainer is buried right next to beloved father uncle and friend jesse j stainer buried right next to each other right here at the merced cemetery Right there is Highway 99. For those of you who don't know who Steven Stainer is, he was a young boy from Merced, California, who was kidnapped and held captive for seven years. Before we get back into the video, I forgot to add in that Steven Stainer went missing a couple blocks away from his house in his hometown, Merced, California. When he was kidnapped, he went to Mariposa, California and then was transferred into what was it called? Mendocino. Mendocino. I could be wrong. This is how you say it. But all right, let's get back to the video. He was only seven years old when he was abducted by Kenneth Parnell, a known sex offender in the 1972. On the first day Parnell molested Stephen on the first night and raped him days later. This torment and abuse. Um, just went on and he had an accomplice named Murphy who to Stephen at the time was Uncle Murphy. They held Stephen captive from December 4th 1972 to March 1st 1980. Now asked his friend uh, Barbara Matthias I'm not too sure if this is how you say her name uh, a woman who has molested Stephen as well to kidnap a child, but she failed. Uh, Barbara lived with Parnell and Stainer. According to Stainer, Barbara and Parnell raped him on nine equations at the age of nine. Uh, when he came home, he was four 14 years old. More information, a teenager friend of Stainer's named Randall Sean Poorman kidnapped five-year-old Timothy White. Timothy was kidnapped. February 1980, and 16 days later, Stephen escaped with Timothy by hitchhiking 40 miles to a police station in Ukai, about 200 miles from Merced. That's kind of a far distance to kidnap a little boy and 
and how he kidnapped him and tricked him was telling Steven, I believe, that um, his parents didn't want him anymore and that pretty much that he's going to be the one taking care of him. So that's kind of how he manipulated this seven-year-old boy's mind. And there's the book named I Am Steven. And it's crazy when you think about it because he was a seven-year-old boy taken from his home by a monster when he did escape. He was 14 and his story became national news. Timothy White was saved from a pedophile after enduring years of abuse and not wanting to see the child experience the same fate. Steven Stainer, um, 16 days later, helped this boy, Timothy. And yeah, so both of them are now um, at long resting. Timothy was a police officer, passed away. Stainer passed away on his bike. And a crazy thing about this story is kind of off subject. Steven Stainer had a brother named Carrie Stainer, also known as the Yosemite Part Killer or the Yosemite Killer. Carrie Stainer killed four women between February and July 1999. On March 18, 1999, the first two victims, 42-year-old Carol Yvonne Sund and 16-year-old Silvina uh, Peloso. I'm not too sure how to say that last name. He killed them and they were found in the trunk of the chaired remains of son's Pontiac rental card. So Carol was strangled with a rope and shot but not raped while 16 year old Sylvina was raped and shot and a week later the police received a note with a hand drawn map indicating where the location of the third victim Carol and 15 year old daughter Juliana's son. So he he didn't just kill the 42 year old mom. He killed, he went and killed the daughter. He killed this innocent 15 year old daughter, Juliana's son. He killed her in the worst way. He sent the police a note saying, we have fun with this one. Police later found Juliana raped and her throat cut. That's it for today. Um, Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to be trying out a ghost box here at the cemetery. We're going to try to come out here around 2 something so we could be out here at 3 a.m. Thank you for watching.